So there's no real focus for this week's video or this episode. We've been doing a few things and we'll just work through each one of those separately. Um, we're getting close, I think, to taking it for a drive, just around the estate. Um, and from that we'll make a decision about whether or not to go for an early MOT, find out which bits need doing, or if there's more to work through. Uh, so that's what we're going to start with now. Right, I don't have any red wire, but what we've done at the front is we've um, taken the power lead that was coming from source we've put one of these clips on so we just clipped it straight over the red with an extra connection in there which we've then connected up like that and so that gives us this side light and then the green here gives us the flasher unit just here okay so we've got side lights and flasher units both coming on now what we don't have well when I switch the lights on obviously what we don't have is this flashing on indicator. I haven't checked yet for hazard. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop behind. We will switch on the side lights so we can see those in action. And we'll try the hazard to see if they're flashing for that. So let's see. Here's... So, okay, well, oh gosh, now that light's gone. Oh, that's a bit worrying. There we go. Okay, so we've got the lights there. We've got one over there flashing, but not this one here. So we'll check to see if this indicator is working. Um, let's just check at the back as well to see if they're both flashing. Ah, left flashing, not right. Okay, so we'll track what that is down and um, see if we can get that flashing first um, as a hazard light. Okay, so there are both flashes going. Problem is the switch and uh, you have to get it in just the right place. So and there's clearly a loose connection behind the switch which is causing that problem. Um, so we can deal with that when we need to. So we have flashers. Look at that, I tried installing the flasher unit again. This time it worked. So, it's working on both sides. Um, what I can't work out is how to get the old one out and then just fix this in, in its place. So, um, we're going to have to look at how to secure it safely, but other than that, um, I think that means all the lights are done, but I'm going to check again tomorrow when it's bright and I can see a bit better. Okay, we're looking to replace this strap. Um, I think the easiest thing is to try to do it without pushing, putting the car up. So we're going to have a bolt here and a bolt up here. That needs to come off. They don't seem to do anything but go through, so and we'll get some penetrating oil on there. And then this is um, the replacement. Right here, okay, and we've got one for either side. So, um, although the other side of the strap looked okay, I think we'll possibly replace both, but we're gonna see this one first. Okay, so this is what we've taken off. At the bottom, we got a nut, two washers, and well, a washer in this. I'm not sure what that is, and whether or not it's rusted and broken off this. 
And that was a um, 9 sixteenths, I think. Yeah, this. Then at the top, we've got a half inch goes through, and then I've knocked that out from in here. So, with our new strap, I think we're going to have to push this inside, and then I can't tell, you see, I can't tell if I've got some sort of metal in there, or if it's just rubber. Um, yeah, it doesn't, I'm not getting any sound, so I think that must just be rubber at the bottom when I'm, I try to tap a bit of metal against it. Here. Yeah. So, um, so I think we have this metal, is it called a bushing if it's metal? And we have this metal bit in the here, um, or the other way, I'm not sure. Um, and then it just fits right back on, so we'll try that. So that's one side done. And um, we gave the hardware, you know, the nuts and bolts, a little bit of a clean with a wire wheel. So, they're now in place, and do the other side. So we're taking the driver's side off as well now. And actually this doesn't look in bad condition, so I'm going to just put it back on. The one thing I am going to note, I'm going to clean up this stuff a bit first. One thing I am going to note is um, for the bottom connector here, they had this big um, penny ring, penny um, washer. Um, and that makes an awful lot more sense to me. So you've got that covering it off um, than the broken one I had on the other side, which is probably what this was meant to be. So I'm going to take the other side back off and stick a new decent sized washer on there. Um, which kind of makes sense to close it all up. But I'm going to, um, I think this can't be that old, so I'm going to leave that on um, as is. Uh, just clean it up a bit. Right, so um, I want to replace um, this with a nice new one. So I'm looking at how we take this off. So I've got the car supported on axle stands under the front mount for the suspension at both ends. I've also got a jack holding it up from the um, rear axle in the middle there. And when I look at this, I see so this is under tension now, so that spring is under some sort of tension. And these, let's see, these here are the bolts I'm going to have to take off. So these are um, with the, the U-bend thingy in it, that goes over in order to remove this piece. Okay, so it comes up and around, so we've got the four bolts underneath. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a jack under here to put some, um, take, take the pressure off the spring if I can get one under there and jack that up. Once I see that that's loose and so the pressure is off here, I think I'll then try to deal with the bolts. So that's the initial plan. We'll see how it's going. Okay, so we've got all four bolts off, although I'm not sure all four will end up going back on, particularly this one. Um, edges are a bit bounded now, so I'm gonna have to buy some. The others look better, um, but we'll clean them off and see if they're good enough. So um, what I'm going to try now is because I've got to now get those U bolts loosened, is I'm going to try taking this off. I'm hoping the spring will then force them apart. So I'm going to do it very slowly and we'll see what happens. And the answer is absolutely nothing. So we'll try a block of wood and a hammer to see if that can shift them.
Okay, so I don't know if those are so rusted that um, nothing's moving, or if there's something else holding it. Um, but I do have here a diagram. There we go. And that looks to me like these bolts go through, down, and then they're just held on at the bottom here. So, I don't think there's anything else holding it on, which means they're rusted solid. Um, so we've got, we've got the um, weight, I guess, of, well, we must have some weight on there. So I'm going to spray it, really cover it with um, penetrating fluid and leave it overnight. And we'll see if, with, with just a bit of pressure from underneath and we'll see if that helps shift it a bit. Okay, so the next day we've had no movement here. I have seen a um, YouTube video from Rust Hunter and he had um, the springs off on the bench but he basically needed to use a crowbar to get it all separated. So we're going to try that now. Okay, so with a little bit of help um, we've got it all off. So the obviously the U bolts go over the top and down through. Then this plate here goes in the middle. And then underneath we got this plate which is attached to the um, the shock absorber, which is hidden up in there. So we've still got these bits rusted on, so we're gonna to have to take a wire wheel to that to clean it off. We'll take a wire wheel to all of this lot to clean them off. And having done that, we'll look at installing uh, the new one. So but we'll take a wire wheel to it all first, clean it off and um, see if we actually wanna paint them all as well. Okay, well we started cleaning up in there a bit and I think um, well we got rid of the metal I think um, I think what we're going to do here though is we're going to give it a quick blast with the uh, air compressor just to get rid of any dust and then we are going to put some rust converter and hammer light on that area and just here we've got one which I've taken a while wheel to and we can see it needs a bit more but we can see it coming up Try to avoid doing the um, threads because I worry about losing them, so I'll have to work out another way of cleaning up that. Against one which hasn't been cleaned, um, and so we're going to clean both of these up in fact and paint them um, before we go any further. So we are going to paint it all up in the end, and that has been now decided. Um, and that will include the new stop, and we can see just some of the bits that have come off. Um, so yeah it, it's something needed doing and so yeah a bit of air to just blow out the dust and then we can start painting up um, some of this stuff in here and it's it's awkward I can't do everything simply because I haven't taken it all off and at some point I might want to do that but for right now since we're in this bit, we might as well clean up and do this bit. So. Right, so we've painted up these parts now. Um, they've had primer plus a couple of coats. So those uh, need to dry and then they can go on the car. Okay, so we've um, painted this up. So it's all protected off. We've painted up the bits that are going on. So. Got the new bolts here from the stopper unit, and um, we're going to start the process of reinstalling it now.
and see how that goes. Okay, so that's fitted back on. Um, and it's connected up at the bottom. I'm currently got a jack under it still, as you can see. Um, but um, I need to check what torque these are meant to be at, these bolts. I can't find anything in the manual, my Haynes manual. So I'm going to ask the MG Experience to see if there is a recommended torque for them. And if so, we'll set it to that. So, have a very close look at where the back of my pedestal goes down. Uh, I'm using two hands, one to hold light and one to video, so I can't really point it out. But you'll see that that back of that pedestal is just a bit over the lip of the... Um, um, there's a bit of cross member sticking out underneath. Okay, so if we get to the other side... You can see, I hope... Oh, See, there we go. You can see it comes down just further. And that's because the pedestal, those sides are slightly different heights, which I hadn't realised. And I was looking for the torque settings. And apparently these are meant to be set a certain way round, and it looks like I've put mine on the wrong way round. So it looks like that's coming off. Well, I'm not doing that today. I'll do that tomorrow now. But it looks like that's going to have to come off and be turned around. Um, which will give me time to find out what the setting should be. So we've experienced a good bit of trouble trying to bleed the clutch and we're struggling to change gear and I'm told, or it's been suggested it might be that we've still got air in there. So I've bought this kit which is um, um, a hydraulic pump so you um, you actually do it from the instead of pumping the brake the the um, clutch for the slave cylinder you put this on the bleed valve and you pump from this in order to drop the pressure and on here you can see the pressure so um, we're gonna set this up and give it a go now right I would say this tool is excellent so we've got it connected up to the pipe here down to our pump here and all we have to do is open it up okay we pump it a few times and you can see here the bubbles I don't think I've opened it enough to be honest There we go. Okay, and you can see it coming out there as well. All right, and that, and then close it off again. Well, I don't know if I've just let air back in because I didn't do that quite as well as previously. But when I did that before, I then tried the car and started it up, and um, I had no problems at all changing gear. So. Um, I haven't just gone and pulled that dry. No, that's okay still. Just. Okay, so um, we can now see though when we start the car. And uh, I'm off the road at the moment. You know, I'm, I'm on stands. So, um, when we change gear, so clutch it in, in easily, into reverse. Okay, and you know, you heard before how much trouble we were having. So, um, so that's um, good. Still a bit of a problem there though. But, but um, much better, so really happy with that. Okay, we're putting the grill on at the moment, which is <coughs> not the easiest thing to do. Um, I'm sure there's an easier way, but the way I'm having to do it is I have to hold the screw in here, take it down to the hole that I have down there. For it, there we go, like that. 
I have to get this down onto the hole and then put a screwdriver in there to twist it in. It's proven quite difficult. There must be an easier way, but I don't know what it is. Okay, so back in 2010, this car failed its MOT um, because of boot joint being broken. So I assume that's that there, since it was on the front. It actually failed on both sides, but I can't find anything wrong with the other side. Um, so I think I'm going to, for now, assume it's okay. So we need to um, place this and I think the way to do that is I'm going to have to take the tie rod off, uh, disconnect, I think I'm going to have to disconnect the tie rod here. I'll have to then take it off, so I'll have to loosen this up and unscrew it, count the number of turns etc. This will then get slid off like that, and then the new one, two of them here, can go on. So, um, yeah, so I think that's what I need to do. So we'll start, we'll start by um, getting some um, penetrating oil on here, here, and this this one to try to loosen it up. I've already put some brake cleaner on here just to try to get the worst of the muck off. Um, and then we'll go from there. Yeah. But the other side looks okay as far as I can tell so I'm going to assume it's just this one side and work on that. Okay well that's relatively easy and that's done but what I am a little bit worried about is this I can't get it up to the torque it's saying and I can't it, it doesn't seem to be when I, um, turning up or down at all so it just seems to be um, spinning in that one position and that I don't quite understand why so um, I'm going to have to do some reading about that. I'm not sure if that's okay or not. Uh, so, a bit of reading and I'll make a decision. But other than that, the other thing actually, looking at that, I think these this uh, might need replacing because, yeah, you see that's gone and ripped off. I wonder if that's why I'm seeing it spin. So I think I'm going to have to replace the tie rod anyway, um, now. And if I can't get that off, that's going to be a right pain. Um, just don't know why that happened, because everything seemed to go quite smoothly. Up until then. Okay. Um, anyway, so that's how we replace the boot on the um, axle, on the steering. That was remarkably easy in fact um, if this <laughs> comes off okay